Ambassador. Hi. How are you doing this afternoon? I'm fine, thank you. Um, this year, you know, uh, Singapore is the ASEAN Chair. Yes. And we are expecting uh, President Jokowi to uh, visit soon next month. Tell us about that. April, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, uh, the uh, first summit for ASEAN uh, is always a summit among all of the head of state of ASEAN. And I think this is very crucial because uh, the main agenda for them is to talk about the strengthening of the integration process among them. And of course, uh, strengthening the ASEAN unity, strengthening the ASEAN centrality. So that was the reason why I think uh, the president is uh, looking forward to uh, attend uh, the summit and uh, having a meeting with all of the ASEAN leaders here in Singapore. Uh, every year, ASEAN has almost more than 1,000 meetings mm -hmm. and since you represent Indonesia here, which is also the headquarters of mm -hmm. ASEAN, so you must have been busy all of this year. What has been happening this quarter? Look, uh, the 1,500 meeting is not a meeting at the uh, government uh, level only. No, we, are not, we are talking about meeting by CSO, by other business organizations which has uh, ASEAN uh, you know, uh, theme. So the meeting uh, involving the government ministry, uh, perhaps uh, less than uh, 400, and uh, involving the Ministry for Foreign Affairs, less than 100 a year. Mm -hmm. So that's so doable. That, yeah, of course, that's doable. Mm -hmm. And we, so far, uh, we have already the uh, ASEAN uh, Foreign Ministers Retreat yes. in uh, Singapore. Yep. We have the ASEAN Economic Minister Retreat as well as the ASEAN Economic Minister uh, taking place uh, in the first uh, two months of the year. Now, as we speak now, uh, there will be a meeting at the senior official levels. There is a meeting uh, by the ambassadors to ASEAN and of course, then there will be meeting involving all of the ASEAN member states and dialogue partners, uh, the 10 dialogue partners, and uh, of course, the other mechanism that ASEAN has already been creating. Indone Indonesia is a very large market, mm. one of the largest markets in ASEAN. Mm. And it is also the you know the the main place where all the business is transacted. Mm. What scope do you see um, for Indonesia in this grouping? Well, you know, uh, in terms of GDP, of course, uh, half the size of ASEAN is Indonesia, uh, and also the market size. So we are hoping, of course, that uh, you know uh, when ASEAN was first established and evolving into an ASEAN community, including also ASEAN economic community. What we need to see for ASEAN is really ASEAN can be uh, developed uh, for the people, by the people, and that is the reason why I think uh, economic integration, uh, making sure that the economy is growing, making sure that ASEAN has already been establishing as a single production base, competitive production base, which means that uh, you know, for other brands which is not originated in ASEAN, if they would like to utilize an ASEAN market with 600 people, 600 million people, they have to be in ASEAN. And in order to accommodate and facilitate them, of course, then ASEAN uh, is uh, to develop a conducive environment. This including also a better connectivity, you know, a better competitiveness competitiveness among ASEAN. So uh, if that happens, meaning that there will be an economy growing, there will be an employment opportunity for the people, there will be uh, an enhanced interactions in terms of the economic interaction among the people in ASEAN, there will be freer movement of people, and this at the end of the day, hopefully, not only uh, you know, uh, maintaining and, and, and strengthening the, the uh, security and stability in ASEAN, but uh, most importantly, of course, improving the prosperity of the people.
digital economy, digital integration, yes. and um, startups, these are things everybody talks about these yes. days. So what, what, what do you see the scope in this direction? Look, uh, the, uh, uh, the theme for Singapore Chairmanship is, is resilience and innovation. Yes. So the digital economy is reflected in the innovation. So uh, of course ASEAN uh, is also going to uh, a growing potential uh, in terms of the, the development of digital economy. So what we did so far together with Singapore in the context, in the bilateral context is that uh, the two leaders, uh, Prime Minister Lee and also President uh, Joko Widodo, when we met last September mm -hmm. in Singapore, they agreed that one of the uh, potential collaborations that Singapore and Indonesia is going to work is about digital, digital economy. Why is that so? Because of course in the future, digital economy is the future. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, you have to also realize that Indonesia, with big uh, number of populations, big market, but also Indonesia has a large pool of talents. Yeah. Indonesia is also a large market, while Singapore is you know, uh, internationally connected. Singapore is also uh, you know, uh, the, 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 you know, where the money where the, where the investment is 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 is, uh, is also coming from, so I think this uh, provide a perfect match between Indonesia and Singapore to really collaborate in a win-win, uh, in a mutually beneficial collaborations. Then, uh, you know, going forward, we are talking about how Indonesia and Singapore collaborate to also utilize the potential of the Asian market. So. I think uh, digital economy is now becoming a password in, 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 in the ASEAN economic integration and we are ready at Indonesia to play a very important uh, part in developing this economic potential in the future. Uh, Ambassador, tourism is something that earns a lot of dollars for mm. every country mm. we talk about mm. and Singapore has been able to attract a lot of attention in mm. terms of tourist numbers. Mm. Mm. And when President Jokowi came here, he spoke about that new bodies. Mm. So is there any talk between Singapore and Indonesia where they can package these two things together? Yeah. Look, you know, if you're talking about ASEAN, uh, among ASEAN citizens, there are more than 70 million people traveling to each other countries. Yeah. This is already a tourism potential in ASEAN. Of course, uh, we are targeting that there will be more than that. But in addition to that, it's almost the same number. Uh, I think you know we are also anticipating a visit from uh, from uh, other countries outside ASEAN. So uh, tourism for us is not, of course, not only about you know uh, bringing people, but also uh, making people uh, having a better understanding about the country. And not only for us, Indonesia, bringing people to uh, well-known uh, destinations. So that was the reason why I think uh, the president would like to replicate the success of well-known tourist destinations in Indonesia, which is Bali, of course, uh, to also be developed in other uh, part of Indonesia, which has also a similar potential in terms of attracting more than 70 million ASEAN tourists, as well as you know uh, tourists from ASEAN uh, from uh, outside ASEAN. So uh, with Singapore, uh, of course, we are collaborating on this, uh, and we are already having a discussion and uh, trying to implement uh, how can we attract people to come to Singapore, not only enjoying Singapore, of course, you know, uh, if they are. Uh, People traveling from a long distance flights, so they may they will they may have to stay for two weeks, so then perhaps they can stay one week in Singapore, and then of course the other attraction that we can offer is either Borobudur uh, Prambanan, Lombo, Lake Toba, even the closest uh, you know the area close to Singapore, Batam and Bintan. Bintan. Yeah. So this is the kind of tourism that we are trying to develop. In addition to that, also we are talking about cruise tourism, yes. where Singapore is also you know, very keen to develop this uh, 
significant potential and they have a uh, facility here to attract a uh, big uh, uh, you know, cruise ship to come but of course when the cruise ship to come more and more cruise ship to come they have to have destinations yeah. they have to have attractions and that was the reason why we are working together with Singapore now we have, we have already uh, started I think one of the cruise liner uh, started uh, a route to, uh, from Singapore Surabaya and north of Bali. There's a five package. Uh, Which cruise uh, line? Uh, Genting. I see. Yeah. So okay. then many more will come because we are now developing uh, North Sumatra as a destination. We are also developing Samara, uh, Central Java. We are developing, of course, Jakarta uh, with uh, Thousand Islands as well as Surabaya. And you know, this is only talking about, uh, uh, I know, like a destination straight from. Singapore, Sumatra, and Java. I see. But beyond that, of course, we have Papua, we have Sulawesi, yes. we have Kalimantan. Those will be, uh, of course, second phase developed phase. to be uh, to be developed in the next phase. Yes. Recently, um, a step in this direction was that you've taken a group of ambassadors uh, mm. for a trip. Tell us about it. What was it about, and how did it go? Oh, there was a uh, there was a tour in Bali. Uh, you know, we we as you know that. You know, uh, last year there was an eruption of Mount Aku in yeah. Bali. Uh, I don't know how the you know uh, public relations uh, uh, handle, uh, but of course uh, you know, they gave uh, a broad impression to the people that when they go to Bali, then they might be affected by the eruption of Mount Aku. Yeah. So we had the opportunity to uh, invite around uh, 50 ambassadors from Jakarta and Singapore to see for themselves, you know, uh, whether uh, where's the location of Mount Agu, whether this is going to be directly impacted or not, uh, to give them a better understanding. Yes. We even brought them to to uh, the nearest, uh, you know, point uh, from Mount Agu, which is the, the mother temple, I Saki. See. I see. And they see uh, people live normally, of course, mm -hmm. you know, there was no more uh, refugees now because uh, it has already been declared that the area, uh, you know, the danger area is getting closer closer to the to the mount uh, to the mountain. Yes. Well, you know, it may be expanded again to the you know previous uh, uh, distance from the mountain. But uh, when the ambassadors went there, they are not only find out that look, I mean, Mount Agung is about eighty kilometers from let's say that Pasa mm -hmm. or, or, or Sanur. So it's not really affecting. Yeah. No, no, I mean, not yeah. really yeah. I mean, the eruption is already affecting uh, six kilometers surrounding the mountain, 80 kilometers so far away. Of course, there was, uh, you know, uh, in order to really ensure a flight safety, they closed the airport. This is about flight, flight safety because we do not know, you know, the the material, the dust, yes. you know, the, the smallest the impact, particle, yeah. Yeah. when the plane taking off, yeah. then they might also, you Be know, fly, visibility. flying, yes, not only visibility, flying uh, to the area where those dust is uh, flown by the wind. So, so it was to, more a precautionary measure than a reason. More a precautionary measure. So I then see. there was a reason, reason why the, the airport was closed. And then now, of course, the authority in Bali and national authority, as well as the tourism Development Board has already been developing uh, some sort of a emergency where if in a worst case scenario that happens, you know, of course people who would like to, while the airport is closed for two days, perhaps they will be granted, I mean offered, you know, uh, more, I mean a free stay perhaps, I don't know, you know, yeah. this is one of the, one of the, you know, the one of the, one of the ways to really calm the, the tourists and to yeah. accommodate the tourists mm -hmm. while the airport is still closed or we will provide a means of transportation to transportation to the nearby airport which is already you know, uh, available either in Lombok or in the area of East Java which is very close to Bali. Yeah. And they also uh, you know, brief about a new destinations that they have never been to even they have been visiting Bali for so many times particularly the east part of Bali, you know, Karangasam where the old kingdom was located. Mm -hmm. Uh, there's one, uh, there's one, uh, 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 you know, water park 
the name uh, Tirta Ganga. Oh. Tirta Ganga, Tirta you name yeah. water, right? Yeah. The, the puri, purified water yes. from Ganga River. Wow. So that was the, that was the reason why they call it Tirta Ganga. I so see. they've never been there. Oh. So this is the first time for them to see. Yeah. And there are a lot of uh, attractions that they can, they can, they can uh, experience, both scenery, culture, uh, you know, uh, culinary. And at the same time also we uh, explain to them that we are going to host one of the biggest events yes. that is in Indonesia. Event. This is the World Bank IMF conference in yes. October. Yeah. That is, uh, you know, we are talking about a delegation of around 15,000 from all over the world. That's a good and number. And we are, of course, very yeah. big, very big, very yeah. big conference. And this yeah. is uh, about, you know, finance minister from all over the world, members of IMF and World Bank. And uh, the president is also inviting the ASEAN leaders oh, to have uh, an interaction with the World Bank and IMF because one of the most important issues they have to discuss is that how to really prevent uh, you know, uh, any potential financial crisis in the future. Yes. So how to develop a strategy together and, and of course most importantly they said that they were, talk, they were talking about the 10 years, uh, 10 years cycle of the financial crisis, you know? Yes. Remember yes. 19, uh, 1998? Yes. And then 2008? Yes. And oh. then now this is 2018, oh, but yes. there's no, you know, very, uh, there's no indicators it's that true. this is going to happen. But of course, uh, we should not complacent. Yes. And, then, and I think this is one of the important subjects that uh, leaders of ASEAN and uh, IMF and World Bank will have to discuss. Uh, what is your message to people from Singapore to attend this? Uh, well, you know, uh, my our message to uh, our Singaporean, uh, you know, uh, friends, uh, brothers and sisters, of course, Bali is always their favorite destination. Of course. They can come yeah. and then, you know, uh, do not be afraid. Of course, if, we, if they need further information, we can provide them with information. But uh, I think, uh, you know, uh, people have started coming back already uh, since last year after the eruptions. And I think this is a good opportunity to really uh, enjoy Bali. But of course, uh, it's not only Bali because uh, beyond Bali there will be Lombok, there will be Lombok, Bajo, well. Komodo, which is the nearby yes, area. Yeah, the nearby yeah, area. Yeah. So, so I think this is a good opportunity, but uh, of course now, these days around, uh, because the infrastructure is now, they are preparing for this uh, uh, the, the big meeting in October. Yes, yes. So there is a, a, a construction going on close to the airport area, the underpass. Mm -hmm. and that is to smoothen the traffic later on. It, it is a little bit, uh, you know, uh, we are going to have experience a little bit of a traffic jam going in and going out from the airport because of that construction. What one is that going to be completed? I think, you know, it's going to be good again. Yes, as a Balinese, yes, I never get bored also going to go to Bali. Yeah, right? Every time yeah. I go to Bali, I'm always, like, I'm and always very excited. Have changed a lot since your boyhood days? Of course, you know, I mean, yes. you know, uh, but you know, in terms of the culture, the way of life, uh, it remains like that. Yeah. I mean, especially that's incredible. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, mean, because so many foreigners exactly. come, it's still it's. I mean, if you go to Kutate, for example, which mm -hmm. is very famous in terms of, uh, you know, uh, people uh, to come. If you look from the outer side, I mean. If you are uh, enjoying the restaurant and bar, of course you thought that you are in one of those very famous uh, tourist destinations in Bali. Mm. But when you go deeper yes. to the community, the and... to the community, you live with the community, you go interact with the community, you still see the traditional Balinese yes. uh, style of uh, you know, livelihood. Coming back to you, Ambassador, you have spent a lot of time in uh, Indonesia looking after the ASEAN Secretariat. Uh, no, not Paris, ASEAN Secretariat, uh, no. Uh, looking after ASEAN. ASEAN. Yeah, so, I'm not looking at <laughs> <laughs> So if you could tell me your best experiences or an anecdote, something like that. Look, you know, uh, ASEAN, uh, you know, I've been in the UN. Mm -hmm. I uh, have the experience for many years working with uh, more than 190 countries in the UN context. 
having a negotiation, having a debate, sometimes, you know, fight of a good cause, mm -hmm. agree to disagree, you know. Uh, so uh, now uh, coming back to ASEAN, of course, we are talking about 10 countries. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it is totally different when, than, than when you're comparing this with the UN. Yes, In the yes. UN, you really, you know, uh, the debate is really, you know, you can debate until you can make your opponent have no further argument. <laughs> And then finally, they will, they will have to say that, of course, you know, uh, give us some space so then this is a good compromise and uh, you are not getting all, I'm not losing all, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. So that is the UN. So the debate can be our, you know, can be, you know, I experience in the UN context a negotiation 24 hours in a row. Wow. Starting from 9 o'clock and then we just, you know, even, you know, uh, unlike the ASEAN meeting, you know, there's no proper lunch, there's no proper dinner. Oh. You just grab sandwich, you just grab whatever mm -hmm. you can grab, and then you go back to the negotiating table while you eat, and then you negotiate. But ASEAN is different, you know. There's always lunch, there's <laughs> always coffee break, there's always dinner. So and then there's also listening. Of course, the collegiality <laughs> is, 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 is very important here. Yeah. And the most important thing in the negotiation uh, in the context of ASEAN, it's not about the debate. It's about how we can really make sure that each and every one of us has the ownership on whatever we are going to decide, whatever agreement that we are going to decide. So mm -hmm. then there's a lot of you know, uh, process where you know, we need to make people better understand, uh, make our negotiating uh, you know, partners to ensure their masters in the capital also better understand that this is not going to harm, this is going to, this is going to, you know, this is for the benefits of our common goals and common, you know, uh, objectives. And that was the reason why, as I said at the beginning, collegiality is very important. Uh, nothing is personal. Of course, sometimes we are also fighting there <laughs> where it's normal. But then uh, the most important thing is that how you can really, uh, you know, uh, uh, I mean, uh, create that every one of us has the ownership on whatever we are going to agree uh, in the negotiations or in the work process in the UN, uh, in, in ASEAN. So I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate that I've been involved in the drafting of the ASEAN Charter, which is a very fundamental document in ASEAN and, 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 and in other uh, drafting of the other uh, outcome document of ASEAN, which really bring ASEAN as what we are, uh, what we see ASEAN now. But of course, we should not complacent, you know, because yes. uh, we do not live in a vacuum. Yes. There are always dynamics, be it internal dynamics, external dynamics. So ASEAN will have to adjust over time, you know, uh, to respond to the internal dynamic as well as to the external dynamic. And the good thing is also, you know, uh, in ASEAN circle, we always see our friends from ASEAN. If we are in the UN, we might see them mm -hmm. in the UN, you know, because the, those people who are at the Ministry for Foreign Affairs who are involved in the UN, they might go back to ASEAN. Yes. Who are in the ASEAN, they might go to the UN. So this, this is, you know, you will see really, uh, you know, you will have a long-term friend. I think this is also what our, you know, uh, our predecessors also experienced before. So they have a very good camaraderie among themselves. They know each other very well. The, you know, the negotiations is not really naming countries, you know, they are naming the names of uh, our, our friends in the negotiating table. So that is really, you know, uh, what ASEAN is all about. For those perhaps, you know, who all, all, you know, uh, always have an experience in the UN, perhaps they might put just mm. uh, for a while, you know, to really adjust with the situation in ASEAN. But ASEAN is good for always? Of course, no. Yeah. I, I mean, for the past 50 years, mm -hmm. That is the, uh, the, the stick of measurement. Mm -hmm. For the past 50 years, we see the economy is growing, prosperity is growing, ASEAN is considered by international community yes. as a player, you know, 
ASEAN is also contributing to, to the maintenance of peace and stability in the region yeah. for 50 years. Of course. Well, of course, in the next 50 years, we might face a different challenge. So then we can use the experience that we have in the past 50 years to really address the challenges that we are going to face in the future, which is not going to be the same. We, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced the challenge is not going to be the same. Perhaps it's more complicated, more you know, sophisticated, and at the same time, we are talking about the technology, digital disruption. So ASEAN will have to adjust mm -hmm. very quickly uh, toward that uh, dynamics. So do you feel proud to be part of this ASEAN success story, which is able to bring the superpowers on the table of every course. year? Of course. Can you yeah. imagine before when I think our founding fathers do not, did not even have a dream, perhaps, our their dream is how to maintain peace and stability in the region, but perhaps they did not even dream before that we were able to bring the leaders of the superpower to our region yes. to have a meeting. I with think us. this is a big success. Of course, yes. of course. No, I mean, there's no, there's no uh, other uh, regional organization, you know, that can be as successful as ASEAN in terms of creating a mechanism where uh, you know, big power would like to play. Yes. would like to also be part of it. So, you know, I mean, this is really, you know, uh, the, this is a recognition of, of the success of ASEAN. During uh, the summit which is going to take place soon, mm. we spoke about is, are there other programs which uh, President Jokowi would be involved with besides No, no, ASEAN I mean, uh, normally for ASEAN meeting, he will be concentrated only on ASEAN agenda. I see. So then he will uh, attend all of those uh, meeting of the leaders and of course this will really again uh, you know uh, uh, emphasizing underlining uh, the need for ASEAN to work together in a strong unified ASEAN uh, as well as in the context of the uh, ASEAN centrality so you know uh, these days around we are looking at the development in many part of the region which is still lead us to something that we cannot predict what okay. is going to happen in the next 10 years. So starting from what we have in the European Union, I yeah. think when they are talking about regional organization, the European Union, ASEAN is some sort of a model with a different kind of emphasis, different kind of a direction, different kind of way of doing business. But then. The, these two organizations can contribute to the maintenance of peace and stability as well as promoting prosperity in the respective region. But then, who anticipated? Yes. Finally, there was a Brexit. Yeah. One of the founding fathers felt that I should not belong to these organizations. And then, then this really changed the whole ballgame. Yes. And, and, and this is the dynamic, the external dynamic, as I mentioned earlier. You have the election out, uh, result of the election in the U.S., yes. and you have also, you know, uh, debate about here in the region. You know how the rivalry between the two big powers and where ASEAN is going to position itself, how ASEAN is going to play its role. This kind of thing is really something that is, uh, you know, an ongoing process, and I, I believe that very crucial for ASEAN to maintain unity and also centrality and the, the summit in April is very important. And then there's going to be a subsequent uh, summit in November also? November, yes. Yeah. November we are talking about not only ASEAN summit but also ASEAN summit together with the dialogue partners, yes. not all of them, you know. Uh, East Asia summit as well? Yeah, yes. no, if on, uh, before the summit in April, yes. there will be a special uh, commemorative summit between ASEAN and Australia. That is mm -hmm. going to take place in March this month mm -hmm. uh, in Sydney. Okay. Uh, so the, the summit in November is a summit between ASEAN leaders and dialogue partners that have a, uh, an annual summit is the US, uh, summit with China, summit with Japan, summit with Korea, summit with uh, India, mm -hmm. and then summit between ASEAN and the three countries, wow, Korea, Japan, and China, and also East Asia Summit, summit between 10 ASEAN and 8 uh, non-ASEAN in the East Asia Summit.
And in addition to that, there will be also other you know, uh, meetings in the market. This, this is really going to take a lot of energy and, 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 and concentration by our leaders. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for your time, That's Ambassador. A pleasure. We are here in your uh, showcase. Yes. Uh, so, through ASEAN Medium, how would you like to attract attention towards the products which Indonesia Look, is famous for? Yes. No. What we are trying to do here, of course, this is only the this is only the fixed display that we have here. Meaning, if it is food, you can try, you can taste it, you can see the packaging and so on and so forth. If it is, you know, other product, you see, you know, how the design and so on and so forth. And we organize meetings here. We invite people to come here. And for them to understand better about this, of course, they can look around, they can see, like, you know, this is the, the tea, different kind of uh, tea. And if they would like to have uh, uh, further information, let me take my uh, cell phone. Mm -hmm. If they would like to have further information, so mm -hmm. what they can do, they just open this, uh, 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 this one, uh, QR reader, mm -hmm. yeah? they open this QR reader and then they just scan this barcode here, wow. scan the barcode, and then you will get the information and then you can get in touch with the producer or exporters of this, of this product. It's, uh, uh, the internet is a little bit slow here. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, this will uh, then be developed in the, in the second phase that we will put also uh, a, a, a platform where they have an e-commerce platform here. I see. So if you like this, if you taste this, if you like this tea, then you are not only able to communicate with the producer, asking them about you know how can you export you know how many quantity you can export but immediately you can also make a purchase wonderful so, so this is and this is of course a, a, a fixed uh, display here this is going to change every three months mm -hmm. but then when they are changed or when people do not have the opportunity to come here then they will be able to access all Into of the information the through the internet so uh, ASEAN, Indonesia, Singapore, all are digitally ready well, to get business. more business. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean, we use technology uh, to bring people closer, to facilitate interactions, to facilitate communications, to facilitate business. Thank you so very much. That for is good. that is what the, the small contribution we can do here. Thank you so much, sir. And so always a pleasure. Thank you very Thank much. You, Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>